welcome back. We are in Exodus chapter 16, and today verses 4, 5, 6, and 7. Let's read it. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day, that I may test them whether or not they will walk in my instruction. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather daily. So Moses and Aaron said to all the sons of Israel, At evening you will know that the Lord has brought you out of the land of Egypt, and in the morning you will see the glory of the Lord, for he hears your grumblings against the Lord. And what are we that you grumble against us? So some interesting bits here. Uh, this grumbling is unjustified. I mean, we'll say more, I guess, as the days go by, but it's very unjustified. And yet, God doesn't come in and just say, hey, your, your grumbling is all unjustified here. He says, I'll tell you what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to feed you up. I'm going to really feed you up. Uh, this is the way it's going to be. In a, in a period of hours here, you're going to have, you're going to have bread. You're going to have uh, some food here. So God has his, his love toward us. He many times, he, in spite of our evil, in spite of our uh, bad acting, our bad behavior, in spite of that, many times he just does good to us. He sends his rain on the just and on the evil. And so he's going to give them food, even though I'm not so sure they deserve it. But the way they're behaving is, is really out of, out of control. But God's going to give them food, and he tells them so. Now, here's another piece that's interesting to me. You know, people want everything just handed to them, you know, hand-delivered. You know how uh, the future is supposed to be so wonderful. You know, in the year 2030, you're, 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 everything's going to be delivered to you by a drone right to your doorstep. <laughs> um, technocratic dreams there from the WEF. But I'll tell you what, right, right here, notice that God says to his people, hey, by the way, you're going to be engaged here. You're going to be involved. You're going to have to go out and gather it. I'm going to give, bring the food to you, but you're going to have to gather it. So there's a, a cooperative element between God and his people. Uh, God sets it up here, and there's a cooperative piece. A lot of Christians want to be, they want to be Christians without cooperating with God. Uh, absolutely wrong. The Bible shows us God's people that, that truly are God's people. They cooperate with him or work with him. Okay, I'm just, it's right there in the text. You look at it with your own eyeballs, okay? The third thing I want to bring out here is there's an open in statement of intent to test. I'm going to test you. I'm going to test my people. And God is uh, laying it out right there, right out in the open. Hey, I'm going to be testing you now. So that should be a clue to everybody to kind of, you know, hey, the Lord who delivers us, who smashed Egypt to smithereens, he's going to be testing us. Something maybe to process, you know, mentally, maybe to process God's going to be testing us. Where is our faith? Finally, the fourth thing I want to bring out here, the last one, uh, there's going to be double food on day six, okay? So now this isn't necessarily told exactly in every detail to the people just yet, but uh, God is going to be getting his people back in tune with him on the seventh day Sabbath, which they must have had some serious trouble observing there in Egypt. Perhaps many of them have even forgotten it. But the seventh day Sabbath from creation week, Genesis 1, first, first, part, first part of the Bible, all the way through to the end of the Bible, basically, you have the seventh day. God's people always worship him uh, all the time, but he has set aside a particular day. It's his holy day, the seventh day Sabbath, and it is going to be observed through, like Isaiah says, we'll, be, we'll, be, we'll still be at it, you know. 100,000 years from now. So the Sabbath, not Sunday, but the, not, the, not the first day, but the seventh day, the climax of the week, the seventh day. We'll learn more about it here as we continue reading. But remember, we haven't got to Sinai. We're not at the Ten Commandments yet, and yet we're going to be uh, getting the Sabbath uh, tuned, tuned up. God's tuning up his people back into the Sabbath, which we actually find out all the way back in Genesis chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. But right here, we're looking at this. All right. Those are some interesting bits for us as we move on into Exodus 16. More tomorrow morning. See you then.